In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an audio classification application with machine learning for embedded devices using Edge Impulse. My name is Kutai Mandi Teresa with Industry 40.tv and I regularly publish Internet of Things and Industry 4.0 tutorials on this channel. So if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell to never miss any of the videos. And for demonstration, I'm going to classify the health of a pump by the sound it makes using this STM32 discovery kit for IoT which comes with an inbuilt microphone among many other sensors. Now to begin, since I'm not in possession of a malfunctioning pump, what I need are real audio samples of a normal and malfunctioning pump. So I found this site that has real malfunctioning industrial machinery audio samples that you can download for free. So if you scroll down here, you can see that we have audio samples for malfunctioning fan, pump, slider, valves, and so forth. So I've already downloaded this pump audio samples dataset. And if you go to the directory here, you'll see that we've got different types of pumps. And for each pump, we've got the normal and abnormal audio samples. So I'll go ahead and play one audio sample of a normal working pump. And then I'll play one of a malfunctioning pump. So as you can hear, there's quite a difference there. So I'll be using these samples to train our model to classify between a normal working and a malfunctioning pump. Okay, so now I need to prepare my development kit to use the microphone to capture these audio samples for training and testing our machine learning model on Edge Impulse. First of all, I'll make sure my development kit is connected to my PC via a USB. And if the connection is successful, you will see the discovery kit IoT node appear as a USB drive here. Okay, so now I'll go to edgeimpulse.com. I'm already signed up, so I'll log into the development studio. So this here is the Edge Impulse development studio. And if I go under devices here, you can see I currently do not have any devices connected. So I'll go ahead and click on connect a new device. Now, as you can see, there are multiple options for data ingestion into this development studio. If you want to build a machine learning model for a mobile app, you can use a smartphone to collect data from its sensors. You could also collect data from any microcontroller system using an SDK. But I'm using a development kit supported on this platform. So I'll go ahead and select browse development boards. And then under development boards here, I'll select the ST Discover Kit IoT node. Okay, now under the development kit here, what we need to do is to first follow these instructions here to install the dependencies, which I have already done. And then if you scroll down here, you'll see the firmware that I need to download onto my dev kit. So I'll go ahead and download that. Okay, and then when the download is complete, I'll go into my downloads folder and then drag the firmware onto my development kit. Now, as the development kit is being flashed, you will notice that the LED is flashing red and green. Okay, the flashing of the development kit is complete. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my command prompt and then I'll start the Edge Impulse daemon. Okay, and then I'll enter my username. Then I'll enter my password. Okay, and then I'll give my device a name. I'll call this Pump Classifier. Yes, so connect to Wi-Fi. 
Now, if I go back to the Edge Impulse Development Studio, here you can see that a device called Palm Classifier is now connected, which is my STM32 Discover Kit for IoT Node. Okay, so now we can begin collecting our normal and abnormal audio samples for training our machine learning model on Edge Impulse. And to do that, I'll be playing sound through the speaker here, and then it will be picked up by the microphone on this development kit right here. Okay, now to start acquiring our audio samples, you go to data acquisition here. And then here under device, you see I've got my pump classifier already selected. So here you can set the sample length. So I'll set it at five seconds. And then here you can set the label name. So I'll start with a normal working pump. So I'll call that normal. And then here I'll select the built-in microphone as our sensor for capturing the audio samples. Okay, so I'm gonna start the normal audio sample. And then I'll start sampling. Okay, so as you can see, we've managed to acquire one audio sample for a normal working pump. And then you can actually see the waveform here. Now, if we go back to our dataset directory, you'll notice that I've got about 1006 audio samples of a normal working pump. So I'm not going to use all of those. I'm probably going to use about 10 minutes of that. And then for our malfunctioning audio samples, I've got about 143 samples. So I'll also use about 10 minutes of that. So I'll go ahead and upload the rest of the samples. Okay, so I've gone ahead and collected audio samples for a normal and malfunctioning pump. So in total, I've collected about 17 minutes of data. I've got two labels, which is normal. There's about nine minutes of audio for a normal working pump. And there's about eight minutes of audio for a malfunctioning pump. So now we need to begin building our model and to do that we go into impulse design. Now here under impulse design we have a couple of blocks that we need to configure. The first one here is the time series data. This is where we specify the sampling size of our audio classifier. In other words, we might have acquired our data in 1 minute and 30 second chunks of audio but we have to specify a constant size of audio slices for classification. So here the default is one second time slices and we'll leave it as that. Next, we'll click here to add a signal processing block. So this is to kind of clean our data before we send it to a neural network for training. So here we'll select the audio MFCC, which I believe is a Fourier transform to convert our signal between time and frequency domains and then we move on to select a learning block. And then here we select a neural network. And then we'll go ahead and save the impulse. Okay, our impulse has been successfully saved. So here under impulse design, we go to MFCC. So here you can see we've got some settings for your fast Fourier transforms, which you can play around with. Now here we'll go ahead and click on generate features and then I'll click on generate features. Okay, so we've finished generating our features and you can see them displayed here graphically on this feature explorer. Now we move on to training our model. So here we click on the new neural network classifier. Again here, you can adjust these machine learning parameters, but we're going to leave them as default. Another thing that you're able to do here is to work with the actual Python code. And to do that, you click here and select edit as Python notebook or switch to Keras expect mode. So we're just going to go ahead and start training our model. Okay, the training of our model is complete. Okay, now if you scroll down here, you'll see the results of our model training. So here we can see that our model is an accuracy of 95.7% and we've got two classes. 
and uh, here on this table you can see that where it was supposed to classify as malfunctioning it got it 15 times wrong and where it was supposed to classify it as normal it got it uh, three times wrong so overall our model seems to be performing quite well so now we can go ahead and do a live testing of the model so to do that we go to the live classification here so this allows us to take another sample using our development kit and then classify it using our trained model so here i will take a one second sample now i'm going to play the audio sample of a normal working pump and start sampling Okay, as you can see, our audio sample has been classified as normal. So now I will go ahead and do the same for a malfunctioning audio sample. Okay, so I'll go ahead and play the audio sample of a malfunctioning pump and start sampling. Okay, that has also been classified correctly as malfunctioning. But obviously for practical purposes, you might want to test a large number of samples for you to actually test if your model is working. So you can actually use the model testing option here to test your model using large data samples. So now we're going to move on to deployment. So as you can see here, you've got quite a number of options for deployment. You can actually produce a C++ library or Arduino library that you can include into your project. You can also get a web assembly for use with the Node.js application. And you can also get an STM32Cube.ai library. And then here you can actually get a binary that you can deploy directly onto a development kit, which includes our STIoT discovery kit. So for demonstration, I'm going to select a binary for deployment onto our development kit. And then I'll leave everything as default and then click on build. Okay, so our firmware is finished building and it has automatically downloaded the .bin file for dragging onto our development kit. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll go to my downloads folder. And then I'll drag this .bin file onto my development kit. Okay, the firmware is finished flashing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run the edge impulse to test our application. But first, I'm going to play the audio sample of a normal working pump. Okay, we've got 0.9% chance that is the normal. And then we've got a 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Okay, as you can see, our model is actually getting more accurate. So, if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share with your connections. Thanks for watching.